what's going on guys chemist nate coming to you live from lamoureux park in scarborough ontario my question for you is what's the difference between a lake like this and a lake covered with algae like this the answer is that the lake covered with algae has undergone eutrophication eutrophication is an overgrowth of algae or cyanobacteria or phytoplankton whatever it takes to cover a lake entirely with some kind of photosynthetic stuff you know plants nutrients have come from somewhere and have flooded into the lake farmers are fertilizing their fields making sure all their crops grow but then the rain comes and the rain washes the phosphorus and the nitrogen and the potassium and all the other stuff in the fertilizer back into the lake and all the stuff plants need to grow dissolved in the water in the lake so what happens plants grow inside the lake like algae cyanobacteria and phytoplankton they cover the entire lake large sheet of green goo large amounts of green goo covering the lake prevent light from getting into the lake and that means that plants that are already on the bottom tend to die because they're not getting light when these things decompose they consume oxygen and what you get is a state of hypoxia which is not a lot of oxygen and if it continues you can get to anoxia which is no oxygen at all dissolved inside the lake if fish don't have oxygen to breathe they will die just one nutrient phosphorus flowing into the lake can cause everything in the lake to die there are a few different things that this eutrophication can cause in a lake number one the lake doesn't look as pretty as it should number two it can absolutely obliterate the fish and animal populations inside the lake because there's no oxygen dissolved inside of it number three because some of the fish have disappeared other species can come in and take over here's another problem that green goo that forms might even be toxic itself we've isolated like 12 or 15 different toxins from these kinds of bacteria and algae problem is these toxins get into the water or fish eat the algae and then they get toxified and then what if you eat the fish that ate the toxic algae it's just a huge problem all around we know that in lakes like this one it's phosphorus that causes the problem because back in the day in something called the experimental lakes area up in northern Ontario they took a lake and literally divided it in half they put up this barrier so that one half had normal conditions and the other half they added phosphorus to it the side that had the phosphorus added to it huge amount of algae the side that didn't have phosphorus added to it perfectly normal like this one where are the nutrients for eutrophication coming from two categories point sources and non-point sources point sources are one place we know exactly where it's coming from and it's actually pretty easy to find and eliminate those say a chemical company just dumping fertilizer into the lake through one of their runoff pipes all we have to do plug the pipe done the worst problem is non-point sources where you can't tell exactly where these nutrients are coming from if you have two or three farmers fields around this, around the same lake the farmers are all gonna apply fertilizer each time it rains the fertilizer gets washed away and you wash a little bit into the lake and then a little bit more and then a little bit more and some of the fertilizer can seep through the soil in the hills and then end up in the lake from the bottom nutrients can come from a whole bunch of different places if they're non-point sources who's going to take responsibility for that certainly not me long story short too much algae equals bad 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 we don't want that much algae in a lake 